you need to learn hybrid cloud right now. Wait, why though? What is that? <laughs> I mean, by now you know that you need to learn cloud, right? It's, I mean, you look around, it's everywhere. It seems like everyone's throwing all their apps up there. Actually, stop it, don't do that. Not everything needs to go in the cloud. And that's the idea behind hybrid cloud. And that's what we're talking about in this video. We'll talk about on-prem infrastructure versus the cloud. What needs to go up there and what needs to stay down? And beyond that, I actually have two huge problems with hybrid cloud, two beefs that I wanna get off my chest. And then I'll talk about the solution we have as well. And a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Dell and Dell Technologies Cloud. We'll talk about them later too. So here we go. So real quick, let's do an on-prem versus public cloud. I mean, <laughs> what does that even mean? So we'll start with this. Every app, every service, every website you use, they have some sort of infrastructure. They need things like servers, routers, switches, databases, firewalls. Pretty much every company needs infrastructure like this, including NetworkShock.Coffee, which is a real coffee website. Check it out. But anyways, my company, my coffee website, my app, like anything else on the internet needs things like these, infrastructure. Traditionally, this stuff lives in my data center. Actually, it lives in my house. You wanna see it? So here's my data center in my house. It's my own little private cloud. And these two bad boys right here, they're my Dell servers. They run my house and my business. This is what we commonly refer to as on-prem or on-premises, on-premises. I don't know how to say it. How do you say it? Comment down below, no idea. I just say on-prem. This is how we've done things forever and really still do. Now, I love this because I have control. It's my data center, my servers, my databases, my router switches and firewalls. And they're mine because I, I bought them. And <laughs> these aren't exactly cheap. In fact, that's one of the biggest reasons that people are looking to the cloud. I mean, look at this, $119,000 for a server, $47,000 for a router, and we're not even done yet. It's these crazy initial costs that make people look up. <laughs> they look to the cloud. Instead of buying a $100,000 server myself, I can go to AWS, rent one of their servers, and pay 10 cents an hour. That's a lot easier to swallow, isn't it? And that's really all the cloud is. You're renting someone else's servers instead of buying your own. But again, it's super attractive, and this becomes an operational expense or an OPEX expense versus a capital expenditure or a CapEx. But that's boring financial stuff. Let's forget about that right now. But cost is not the only thing that makes the cloud lit. Being able to expand and grow, make servers out of thin air in just a few clicks, a few moments, that's what makes the cloud kind of amazing, kind of magical. Like, for example, my coffee website, let's say it starts to take off, like, watch out, Starbucks, I'm coming for you. And I get just a ton of traffic. It's killing me. My servers are screaming, my routers saying help. What do I do? Well, I can either sell less coffee, which I'm not going to do, or I can go out and buy more servers, more routers, more switches to accommodate this increase in traffic, but that's expensive and it takes time, weeks, months, expertise. I don't got time for that. But with the cloud, with a few clicks, I can take one server and turn that sucker into two, into three, four, five, a million, or just however many I need and then make them go away when I'm done. Now, the last thing is probably the best thing about the cloud. It's the features it has. We can do things in the cloud that we can't do over here on-prem, at least not well. One of those things is a big buzzword in the industry right now, it's microservices. And I say right now, it's been around for a bit, but it's still hot. Now what this basically means, and it's a pretty big shift, we're changing the way we do IT. And one of the big things is that we change the way we deploy our apps. Now normally, Network Chuck Coffee might be one big app, one big fat app, deployed on a typical on-prem infrastructure like this, servers, databases, networks, routers, switches, all that kind of stuff. The new, and dare I say cool way to do things is microservices. Instead of doing this one big fat app, we'll break up the app into smaller pieces, smaller services. Developers love this. They can update their apps really quickly. They can write their code faster. A, a lot of benefits from this. But what this also involves is doing away with the old way of doing things. Old data center technology, old on-prem stuff. Instead of deploying our apps to a server with virtual machines, like we do on-prem, we'll deploy our apps inside things called containers. Each app will have its own container, and we can deploy a lot of these. It's super fast. I mean, if you're curious about what a container is, because it is a whole big thing, I've actually got a video right here. And then we'll use this thing called Kubernetes, which is a tool that can help us deploy containers, help us manage them, network them together. It's crazy. And I say all this just to say this is microservices, and this is the new way that developers and IT departments want to design their applications. It's the way I want Network Chuck Coffee to be built. But <laughs> these features like containers and Kubernetes, these are what we commonly refer to as cloud native features, cloud native tools. Meaning that if you want to deploy containers and Kubernetes and do things the new cool fast way, the best way to do it is in the cloud. At least that's been the case for a very long time, but it's going to be a bit different now. I'll tell you more about it here in a moment. But traditionally, the cloud's been the best place to do this because it has all these features baked in. All the tools to do this are right there. Whereas on-prem over here, not really built for that. Now I know, I'm making the cloud look pretty good. And it, the choice might be obvious. Duh, let's go to the cloud. Let's put everything in the cloud. Let's do it right now. No, <laughs> bad, don't do that. I know it's tempting, I know it's attractive, 
but not everything should go in the cloud. So for example, Network Chuck Coffee, it makes a lot of sense for me to put my application in the cloud for the elasticity of it to expand and grow rapidly when I need to if I have a lot of coffee orders. But you probably didn't know this, I have a secret government contract. I'm the official coffee supplier of the CIA and the NSA. Not really, but imagine if I was. I would have super secret servers that only they could access. Secure coffee delivery straight to the NSA. By the way, if y'all are watching, I would love to supply your coffee, just, just saying. Now the NSA and the CIA, they have some crazy security requirements and compliance rules I have to go by. So much so that I can't put my stuff in the cloud. There are rules preventing me from doing that. I have to keep these stuff in my own private data center where I have more control and I can satisfy their rules. Now this is a silly example, but this is real. There are tons of guidelines that people have to go by, different rules and, and compliances they have to go through. GPDR or GDPR, I always confuse those. And that's just one example. You might have apps that have a tremendous amount of storage requirements and that would be really expensive in the cloud. You might have apps that need low latency. They need to be right next to your end users and putting them in the cloud is not performing well. So you wanna keep those in house, keep those in your own data center. So now we're at the point where you're thinking, okay, well, what do I do? Chuck, tell me what do I do? Is it cloud? Is it is it on-prem? What? The answer is yes. The answer is both. That's where hybrid cloud comes into play. Hybrid cloud is what we see a lot of companies doing. In fact, most companies do this. When it makes sense, put apps in the cloud. When it doesn't, keep them on-prem. Now, technically, this is hybrid cloud, but I don't like it. Actually, I've got two beefs with hybrid cloud right now. Two problems that we need to fix. My first problem is this. In a lot of ways, the cloud is better. It has better features. It's, it's cooler. Why can't my on-prem infrastructure be more cloudy? And then honestly, vice versa. There's some things I like about on-prem. The way we manage our infrastructure, I wish that was kind of the same way in the cloud. We actually do have a solution to that, by the way. I'll, I'll cover it here in a moment. But first, my second beef. And it bleeds right into this. Hybrid cloud is cool, but it's a huge, huge management problem. For your on-prem environment, you have people, you have staff, you have network engineers, you've got server admins. These people are trained in specialized skills to manage your on-prem infrastructure. But that's not the only place you have infrastructure now. You got stuff up in the cloud, which means you need another set of people. People who understand the cloud, people who can manage it. And often we don't have those people, right? We force our network and server admins to learn the cloud, which again is a huge pain point. I've got two places I'm managing my infrastructure and it's kind of a pain. And it's actually worse than that because most often it's not just one cloud. Like, yeah, your company may be using AWS, but they're probably also using Azure, Microsoft Azure, and they're probably using Google Cloud, GCP. You see, most companies on average use around five different cloud providers. And you might be thinking, why? Well, because some cloud providers have better features. Some have lower cost, and it does make sense to use different cloud vendors. This is actually a thing called multi-cloud. We're talking about hybrid cloud, and now we're talking about multi-cloud. So now here's our problem. We have multi-cloud, right? We're using AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. They don't all do things the same way. They all have their own portal, their own set of services. They all have their own way of deploying virtual machines, microservices, storage, and each are their own discipline like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. They all have their own set of certification you can get. You can become specialized and focus on these things. They require people who know it. So are you seeing why I have a problem with this? We've got all these different portals that we have to log into and manage, including our on-prem environment, which will have a whole slew of things we're dealing with. So you either have a ton of engineers on staff or just a couple of very, very tired, stressed out engineers who are about to quit. Not to mention interoperability, working with the clouds between your on-prem and the different clouds. And do they work together? Can we, can we move our app this way and that way? Maybe. So those are my two beasts. Now there is a solution, but I wanted to vent, get that off my chest. Again, how can I get cloud-like features in my data center? How can I solve the administrative burden, the management burden of all these different interfaces I have to log into? Dell and VMware have been working on a solution to this very problem. Now I'm a huge fan of both companies. Of course, Dell is a sponsor of this video. I've used Dell servers in the corporate world and also in my own data center right now. And I'm currently also using VMware. So what are they doing? How are they helping us? Dell makes servers. They, they make the servers that we put in our data center. Again, this is what I have. And in a traditional data center on-prem, we're going to install VMware ESXi. This is the type one hypervisor we use to create and manage our virtual machines. Now, hypervisor, virtual machine, if all that's foreign to you, I've got a video right here you can check out. So these are the companies that many people use on-prem to manage their data centers, to make them happen. They, out of anyone, would know our struggle as we're dealing with hybrid cloud. So they came up with a solution, and it's, it's amazing. Now, let me start with this. What if the way we manage our on-prem data centers with VMware, Dell, all the tools we use to do that, what if those are the same tools we use to manage our stuff in Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS? What if it was all the same? That's what they did. <laughs> Check this out. Dell Technologies Cloud, they partnered with VMware, VMware Cloud Foundation, and they're doing just that. Let me explain, and I'll start with VMware. You can take VMware, 
the VMware you know and love, the way you manage your on-prem infrastructure, and you can just put that in AWS. You can put that in Azure, in cl Google Cloud. It's called VMware Cloud Foundation, and it's amazing. Now, let me say it again. The same tools you use on-prem, such as vCenter and vRealize, both apps we can use to manage our on-prem data center infrastructure. We'll use these same tools to manage our infrastructure in these clouds. Now, let me show you an example of how cool this is. One common thing we do with on-prem infrastructure is we move our stuff around. Maybe we have a virtual machine in one data center and we wanna move it to another data center, a process called vMotion in VMware. Here, I'm gonna show you how we can do vMotion from our data center on-prem to the cloud, just like that. Check it out. Here, I'm managing my local infrastructure. I'm gonna to go to the hybrid cloud feature of VMware and I'm going to start my migration. I'm gonna migrate these virtual machines, select all these guys, click next, and here we go. I'm gonna migrate these to the cloud. Notice I only dropped one ping. And then I can jump over to my portal over here and notice it looks the same because it's the same type of management, but this is actually my VMware environment in the cloud. And there are my VMs I just moved there. And then I can just scooch them on back. Let's do that. Let's migrate them again, do a reverse migration, take all those guys and bring them on back. So one set of tools to rule them all, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, on-prem, it's amazing. But hold up, hold up. So far, I've only shown you what we normally do in a traditional environment, virtual machines. That's not very cloudy, is it? The new thing is microservices, containers, Kubernetes. That was my other big beef, right? Like I want my on-premises infrastructure, on-premises, on-prem. Dude, I'm still confused. I want that to be more cloudy. They, they did that. <laughs> it's really cool. Check this out. So here on-prem, our server is Dell EMC's VX Rail. They've partnered with VMware Cloud Foundation to have it baked in, tightly engineered, perfect, ready to go. Also keep in mind that the same tools, features, and functions and way we manage it are spread out all over your clouds. It's gonna cover them up, because it doesn't matter. We're using VMware Cloud Foundation. <laughs> it doesn't matter what portal there is. We're not logging into the AWS portal or logging in and managing it with vCenter, with vRealize. Now, VMware Cloud Foundation is more than just managing virtual machines. They call it their SDDC or their Software Defined Data Center. Now, Software Defined Data Center, what is that? It's a lot, too much to explain right now, but I want you to think about one word, automation. It helps you to automate and create things like, hey, maybe your network in your data center, your virtual machines, VMs. And then the thing that helps us become more cloudy, remember I mentioned microservices, Kubernetes containers, it can do that. <laughs> With a service called Tanzu, they've got everything you need to start using Kubernetes, which is normally shortened to K8S, and you can start building out your containers and your microservice architecture. So what am I saying? I'm saying that the cool features we love about the cloud, being able to use Kubernetes and containers and all the things that the cool kids are doing, we can now do that on-prem. Those cloud native things are now also native to on-prem. You almost can't call it cloud native anymore. So now our on-prem is more cloudy. And the same way we manage our Kubernetes clusters, on-prem will be the same way we manage them in the cloud. In fact, we can orchestrate them between the clouds, move them around, scale up, scale down, side to side, I don't know, dance, whatever you want to do. It's, it's pretty cool. Hybrid cloud. It's the way to go. Some things do make sense to put in the cloud, while other stuff we should probably keep on-prem. And in this video, we talked about what on-prem was and what it looked like compared to the cloud and why the cloud really is amazing. Like, I'm sure after hearing that, you're like, man, I want to throw everything up there. But it doesn't make a lot of sense for some things. But then I mentioned my two beefs I had with hybrid cloud and that I wanted my on-prem infrastructure to be more cloudy, to have some of those cool cloud features that all the cool kids are using. I'm also getting tired of all the management portals I have to log into, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and then managing my on-prem stuff too, it's frustrating. But Dell and VMware are helping us out with that. Dell Technologies Cloud, partnering with VMware Cloud Foundation. The way we manage our on-prem infrastructure, which is normally through VMware, we can now put VMware everywhere. VMware and AWS, Cloud, Google Cloud, Azure, and we can manage them all the same way. It's basically like all these cloud providers are just your other data centers, which is kind of how you want to treat them, right? You don't want to manage a million different tool sets and document a million different ways to do things. You want just one way to do things. That saves you time and money, and it kind of saves you from manual error, because let's be honest, if you have a million different ways to do things, odds are you're gonna mess up eventually. And then the most exciting thing for me is we're able to make our on-prem infrastructure a bit more cloudy. And of course, we can still manage our infrastructure the same way. If you wanna just do typical monolithic applications with virtual machines, let's do that. We can do it on-prem in the cloud. We can move them around vMotion. But let's say you wanna start doing what the cool kids are doing. You wanna start doing microservices and uh, deploying containers and Kubernetes. You can do that too on-prem and anywhere else you wanna be. Go buy yourself a Dell VX Rail. 
It's got VMware Cloud Foundation baked in, tightly integrated, tightly engineered. It's actually a hyper-converged infrastructure, which is a topic for another time, but it's got everything baked in. And you can deploy containers and Kubernetes on-prem, in the cloud, wherever. It's it's pretty cool. I'm excited about it, in case you can't tell. And honestly, I am, because one of my frustrations with all these new technologies is that there's too much. Too many tools, too many things we have to learn, too much complication. So I think, honestly, my favorite thing about this whole thing is that we're empowering engineers. The engineers who on-prem have been managing our infrastructures forever. The virtualization engineers, the VMware engineers, the server admins. They have honed their skills and, and been focusing on making VMware in their environment awesome. And now instead of forcing them to learn all these different tool sets, we can say, hey, let's just put what you already know up there and just make you better, make your life easier. Make sure you can go home at night at a reasonable time. I'm on board for that. I love that. Anyways, guys, that's about it. Huge shout out to Dell for sponsoring this video. I love what they're doing. Again, I'm a huge fan. I've got the servers in my <laughs> server cabinet right now. And if you want to learn more, of course, I got links below. VMware, Dell, all that they're doing, check it out. Yep, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys later.